In this lesson on protein function from Chapter 5, we want to look at the Bohr effect and the regulation of oxygen binding to hemoglobin. In this rather complex diagram here, we see what's happening biochemically when we breathe, and we're going to take this diagram apart piece by piece. First, let's notice on the far left, we see what's happening with hemoglobin in the lungs. It's going to pick up oxygen for delivery to the tissues, and it's going to release CO2 so that we can expel that from the lungs. In the tissues, hemoglobin is going to release oxygen to the tissues for use and pick up CO2 for delivery for, to the lungs as a waste product. The Bohr effect has to do with the effect of pH on oxygen binding to hemoglobin. So we want to start with this very simple equilibrium. Here we have hemoglobin in its protonated state. It binds oxygen and it becomes bound to oxygen here. In the process, it will release H plus or protons. In other words, the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin lowers the pK values for some residues. And remember, the lower the pK value, the more likely it is to donate a proton. So those protons were donated. So this is the equilibrium that we want to look at and see how it affects oxygen binding in the lungs and tissues. You'll also want to keep in mind the law of mass action as we examine this equilibrium. As pH increases, remember that represents a decrease in the concentration of H+. So by the law of mass action, as we pull away a component, we're pulling the equilibrium in that direction. So as H plus concentration decreases, we're favoring oxygen binding. The equilibrium shifts to the right. On the other hand, if pH is decreasing, that is we're increasing the concentration of H plus, then by the law of mass action, as we increase a component on this side of the equilibrium, we're forcing it in the opposite direction. The equilibrium will shift left, and that favors oxygen release. So let's see how this relates to pickup and delivery of oxygen. Let's look first at what's happening in the tissues. Of course, the tissues need oxygen in respiration, and their waste product from metabolism is CO2. Remember, CO2 is a nonpolar compound, readily diffuses into these red blood cells, and of course, it's the red blood cells that are carrying the hemoglobin. Within the red blood cell, we have the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, and remember, it readily converts CO2 to bicarbonate and H+, plus, and that's circled in red here. So within the red blood cell, we are converting CO2 to bicarbonate and H+. Plus. But remember the equilibrium we just looked at. As we increase the H plus concentration, that, as we, that is, as we lower the pH, it induces hemoglobin to release more oxygen. But this is exactly what we hope to accomplish in tissues. So the net effect is that we release oxygen in the tissues, and the red blood cells take up carbon dioxide for delivery to the lungs in order to expel it. The hemoglobin does bind some of the CO2, but it's actually a small amount. Let's next look at what happens when it gets to the lungs. In the lungs, remember the partial pressure is very high for oxygen, and that means hemoglobin will readily bind the oxygen. As it does so, it releases H+. The H plus will combine with the bicarbonate in the red blood cell to form CO2, and that will readily diffuse through the red blood cell membrane, and that gets expelled from the lungs and breathed out. So the net effect is that we bind oxygens in the lungs and release CO2. So you can see how a simple matter of pH can affect the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin and it varies depending on the lungs and the tissues. Let's look at another means of regulating binding of oxygen to hemoglobin, and that's by the molecule bisphosphoglycerate. The structure is illustrated at the bottom of the slide here, but it's not important you remember the structure. 
This phosphoglycerate binds to hemoglobin in its deoxy state. Remember that's the T or tense state where it has a lowered affinity for oxygen binding. It binds to the T state and stabilizes it, so more of the molecules or hemoglobin are in the T state, so less of the oxygen is bound, more is released. In the R state of hemoglobin, remember the molecule is more compact, and so the binding cavity is too small. In other words, hemoglobin in the R state will not bind bisphosphoglycerate. So in the presence of bisphosphoglycerate, hemoglobin is favored with oxygen release. Not binding oxygen, but releasing it. So let's see what effect that has. This is actually how oxygen gets from mother to fetus in the case of pregnancy. The mother has normal hemoglobin, which means it's going to bind to bisphosphoglycerate in the T state and have a lowered oxygen affinity. In our diagram here, we have a fractional saturation curve, partial pressure of oxygen on the x-axis, and fractional saturation on the y-axis. The curve for the mother is depicted in green here. So in the presence of BPG, it has a reduced affinity for oxygen. You'll notice the curve is shifted right, which means we have a higher P50 value and therefore a lower oxygen affinity. In the case of the fetus, it has a modified form of hemoglobin. It binds bisphosphoglycerate less well, so the hemoglobin of the fetus is more in the R state. That means increased oxygen affinity. So that's our purple curve here. You can see in the absence of bisphosphoglycerate, and this would be true for the fetus, it's shifted towards the left, towards a lower P50 value and therefore a higher affinity. So the mother's hemoglobin is more likely to release oxygen and the fetal hemoglobin is more likely to pick it up. So this is how oxygen passes from mother to fetus. You'll notice in both cases the curves are still sigmoidal. The manner in which hemoglobin binds oxygen is still the same. It's just whether or not that oxygen affinity is increased or decreased. Whether the curve is shifted right or left. Bisphosphoglycerate also has to do with adaptation of oxygen binding at high altitudes. At high altitudes, the body produces more BPG, and remember that means a lower affinity for oxygen. That might seem contrary at high altitudes where there's less oxygen available, but remember the partial pressure in the lungs is still high, so there's no trouble picking it up in the lungs. But it does mean when it gets to the tissues, it more readily releases the oxygen, and that's where your body really needs it. So in these two ways, both by the Bohr effect and by the presence or absence of bisphosphoglycerate, we can modulate or moderate the oxygen binding affinity of hemoglobin. This concludes our studies of the oxygen binding proteins myoglobin and hemoglobin. In our next video lesson, we'll begin our studies of the structural proteins with the consideration of actin and how it forms into microfilaments. We also want to see how this relates to its biological role.